power in we. There is power in us. There is power when we come together. Why? Because a house divided against itself cannot stand. Say we're better together. Mm. Say we're stronger together. Say we're wealthier together. Who you with? Who Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Sunday. It is July the 12th. And as the Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made and we are gonna rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, I'm excited about this message that I have the privilege of sharing with you. And I want you to ask you to go ahead and get your Bibles ready. Get your pen and pencil and notebook out because we wanna be studious this morning with this word. I promise you, it's going to bless you by the time we're done. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time that we're about to spend together in your word. We ask that you would lead us and guide us and give us divine insight in this moment so that we can grow, transform, and be everything that you've called us to be. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, today's message is entitled Night, Night. That's right. Night, Night. What a title. That's what I said when God gave it to me, but it'll make sense when we get to the end. Listen, I know it may be summertime right now and I know there's so many things going on, but I believe that right now is a great time for one thing, encouragement. It's always the right season for encouragement. And I wanna ask your permission today, can I encourage somebody? Can I encourage you today? I hope that you said yes, because I have a message of encouragement that I think all of us need right now. Here's what I wanna get you to imagine with me, if you will, imagine that you have a camera. And imagine that you took some pictures of some ugly things in your life. Go ahead, just imagine you taking some photographs of some ugly things. When I talk about things, I'm talking about experiences. I'm talking about errors. I'm talking about mistakes. I'm talking about some things in your past and in your life that are just absolutely ugly. Things you're not proud of. Truth be told, they may even be things that you're ashamed of. Well, listen, imagine you taking a picture of those things. And after you took a picture of those things, imagine yourself printing out those photographs. And then last but not least, imagine yourself purchasing frames for every single one of those pictures. Imagine yourself framing those ugly pictures of your past, of your pain, of your shame, and you took them, you printed them, and you framed them, and then you hung them on the wall as a constant reminder of the mistakes and the pain and the shame 
that you have or have carried in your life or experienced in your life. Here's where I want to start this message. God told me to tell you today, it's time for you to unframe your pain. Woo, good God Almighty. I'm excited too early. Can I say that again? God told me to tell you, it is time for you to unframe your pain. But listen, you've got another thing you need to do. God said also to tell you, it's time for you to unframe your shame. See, a lot of you have framed your pain and you've framed your shame. How do you say I framed my pain and how do you say I framed my shame? You frame your life by the pain and the shame that you've experienced. Listen, I know what it's like to do that because there was a time in my life that I did it too. And here's what I want to bless you with. Never. I need somebody to say never. Never make a portrait out of your pain. Good God Almighty. Ah, can I go a little deeper? Never make a portrait out of your shame. Listen, this will bless your life. When you make a portrait out of your pain and your shame, you do something to yourself that's not helpful. You do something to yourself that's not helpful healthy. What do you do? You create a memory and a weight that you carry until you hear a message like the one today. Here's what I want you to echo in your spirit. Matter of fact, I want you to shout this out. Shout new life. Come on. I need somebody to say new life. Pastor, what are you talking about? Well, Romans six and four says this. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live, catch this, a new life. I told you I need somebody to shout new life. I am here today to encourage you and to remind you and to serve notice on your past and your pain and your shame that God has authorized us. Better yet, God has commanded us to live a new life. Come here, Ephesians, the second chapter, verses four through five. Peep this says, but God is so rich in mercy. Mm, This is good. And he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life. When did he do it, pastor? When he raised Christ from the dead. I say again, I need somebody to shout new life because that's what we that's what we do in the day. We are giving ourselves permission to live a new life. Okay, you need more scripture, no problem, I got you. Come here, Colossians, the third chapter, the 10th verse. It says, put on your new nature, preach Pastor Troy, and be renewed, uh uh-oh, as you learn, as you learn, as you learn to know your creator, and peep this, and become like him. I need somebody to say again, new life. See, here's what the enemy does not want you to acknowledge. He does not even want you to know it. He definitely doesn't want you to embrace it. And he definitely doesn't want you to believe it, that you have all rights according to the kingdom of God to live a new life. You have all rights to live a new life as Colossians, the third chapter, 10th verse says, as you learn to know your creator. See, the more you get to know about God, you start to understand how much he really loves you. And that knowledge of his love is what enables you to not be shamed, not have pain, not live under the shadow of what you've done or where you've been. No, God says today is the day that it is imperative and important that every believer check their life, that every believer make sure that they're living the new life and not not living under the shadow of their old life. Come here, Second Corinthians. I got more scripture for you now. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17. Check this out. Says this. This means that anyone I like that. Somebody say anyone, anyone who belongs to Christ. Don't miss this has become. Hello, a new person. I didn't write it, but I wish I did. The Bible says anyone who belongs to Christ. Peep this becomes a new person and it gets better. The old life is gone. Uh Oh, and a new life has begun. See, I need you to embrace this today because listen, you cannot truly be free if you're still living under the auspice of your past. You cannot truly be free if you're still living under the pain and the shame of where you've come from and what you've been through. I'm telling you today, we are shouting new life. Come here, Acts the fifth chapter for those that just need one more scripture. I just want to take some time to walk you through God's word so that you feel absolutely convinced and confident 
that you should be living the new life, that God has given you a new life, that the old has passed away and the new life is yours, but you have got to embrace it today because the enemy doesn't want you to live this new life. The enemy doesn't even want you to believe that the new life exists. He doesn't even want you to believe that the new life is possible, but God sent me today as his servant and his messenger to remind somebody today that this is the season with all the coronavirus going on and with all the political things going on and with all the injustice going on, this is the perfect season for you to embrace your God ordained new life. Come here, Acts the fifth chapter. This is good guys, verse 20 from the NIV translation, check out what it says. It says, go, mm, I like this right here. Go, what does it say? It say, go, go do what? Stand in the temple courts mm, and do what? And tell the people all about this new life. OMG.com, here's a command, New Testament, telling you to go and stand in the temple courts. See, when you stand in the temple courts, you're standing there as a representation of God. You're standing there as a kingdom ambassador of God. God says, I'm commissioning you to go and stand in the temple courts. And when you get there, I want you to tell the people about this new life. See, here's what Satan wants. Mm, Satan wants you to go somewhere and sit in a corner and be in pain and be shamed. God said, I wish you would. God said, you better not go sit in the corner and be in pain and be in shame. God says, no, I want you to go stand in the streets. That's right, go stand where everybody can see you. What do you mean? Yeah, those who knew you, those who did whatever you did, they was right there with you. God says, they deserve to see what the new life looks like. They deserve to hear out of your mouth, not out of the pastor's mouth, not out of somebody else's mouth, but they knew you when you were down. They knew you when you were wrong. They knew you when you were crazy. They knew you when you were insane. They knew you when you were doing every and anything you wanted to do. And God says, you have an obligation and a responsibility not to hide in the church, not to sit in the pews, but God says, get out there in the streets huh, and tell everybody about this new life. I'm feeling this thing today. Why is God encouraging us today to shout loud about our new life? Why? Because some people have lost hope. Some people have lost their dreams. Some people have lost their very desire for a better life because they don't know that there is the possibility of a new life. And who, mm, good God Almighty, I said, who would be the best person to let them know the who is you? God said, go to the streets and tell them about this new life. Now I know somebody might be saying, well, pastor, here's a question, what right do I have? What, what right do I have, Pastor Troy, to, to live a new life? Knowing all that I've done wrong and all that I've done hasn't been right. What, what, what right do I have to live a new life? Oh, you shouldn't have asked me that question. Come here, Lamentations, yeah, the third chapter. Why don't you cha-cha slide on over to Lamentations, the third chapter, and park it at verse 22 and 23. You ask me, what right do you have mm, to live this new life knowing all that you've done wasn't right? Knowing all the wrong things that you've done, you ask me what right do you have to live this new life? Well, let's see what Lamentation says. Lamentation says this, the steadfast love, ha, somebody hold my mule, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Now this right here make me wanna shout. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. Don't miss this, they are new, omg.com, they are new every morning. And then peep this, it wraps it up with a nice little bow like this. Great is your faithfulness, God. Good God Almighty. What a powerful reminder of why you and I have the right to live this new life in spite of anything we've done, anywhere we've been, any pain we have, in a shame we're carrying, God says, you better read Lamentations, the third chapter, so that you can know it's not about you. Woo, good God Almighty. It's all about him. It's all about God and his love is, woo, it never ceases. See, I like that kind of love. In other words, God's love don't stop, can't stop, won't stop, uh-uh-uh, won't stop. I thought I told you that we won't stop. I'm trying to tell you God's love never ceases. See, that's the kind of love you can count on. That's the kind of love you can lean on. That's the kind of love you can put your whole life on and pour your whole life in because his love doesn't turn on and turn off. Woo, 
Ooh, good God Almighty. His love doesn't pause and then go. No, his love never ceases. The love of God is an everlasting love. But then he says, listen, his mercies never come to an end. See, if you grew up in a religious church, they taught you that the mercies of God will run out and the mercies of God will come to an end. My Bible tells me that the mercies of God never end. Why? Because his love never ceases. And then here's the part that makes me shout. Every morning I open my eyes and I put 10 toes down on the ground. This is what makes me shout right here. His mercies are renewed every morning. See, you ought to shout right there. God doesn't focus on what you did yesterday. Now, if God's not focused on what you did yesterday, what makes you think God's focused on what you did last week, last month, last year, or 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago? God says, listen, every morning that I give you the gift of life, it comes wrapped up in a bow called new mercies. Good God Almighty. I'm giving you new mercies every day. Watch this. So you can live the new life every day because I don't want you to be bogged down with the pain. I don't want you to be bogged down with the shame. I want you to know that every day you wake up, you wake up in new mercies. That's the reason that you got to go and live this new life. That's the reason why you got to go and be a testimony and give a testimony about the new life that God is giving you. Why? Because God God wakes you up every day for that purpose and that purpose alone. Not just so you can quietly enjoy the grace of God. Not just so you can silently enjoy the mercies of God. No, God says, I'm waking you up every day because I want some advertisement. I'm waking you up every day because this world has forgotten that I sent my son to down the cross for them. I'm waking you up every day because there's so much chaos that most folks don't recognize that in the midst of the chaos, I am still God. In the midst of the crisis, Christ is the answer. And God says, I wake you up every day and give you new mercies so that you can talk about this new life. I need somebody to shout new life. I feel good in here now. Somebody say new life. Yeah, I'm going to live this new life. I'm going to live this new life to the best of my ability. I'm going to live this new life. Why? Because God has allowed me to see another day. I'm going to live this new life because I'm grateful. Mm, I'm grateful for the second chance, the third chance, the fourth chance and all the chances I can't count. I'm grateful. And the only way I can show God I'm truly grateful, not just me, the only way you can show God you're truly grateful uh -huh, is to be living this new life. Can I go just a little bit deeper? Here's what I need you to embrace. Matter of fact, here we go. Catch it with two hands. Here's what I need you to catch. God is the God of renewal. Hello. Good night. I just said something, but I feel good now. Did you hear what I just said? God is the God of renewal. OMG. Dot com. OK, OK. You trying to act like you don't know what renewal is. OK, your driving license is going to expire sooner or later when it expires or close to it expiring. You want to go down to the Department of Transportation. You want to go down there. You want to go and you want to do what you want to renew your license. What, what, what does that mean? That means that the date that says it expires gets expanded. That means the date that says it is, is expired gets extended. And I stopped by to tell you that we serve a God that's the God of renewal. Here's what I need you to catch. When you think you've expired, God shouts new life. <laughs> when you think it's over, God shouts new life. Hey, I feel some help now. When you think your back is against the wall and you might as well throw in the towel. Why? Because there are no options and there are no alternatives that you can see. God shouts from heaven, new life. And when God says new life, the expiration date changes on your life. The expiration date on your power changes. The expiration date on your vision changes. The expiration date on your entire life changes when God hollers out new life. Why does he holler new life from heaven? Because sometimes we need to be reminded that this earth is not our home. Sometimes we need to be reminded that God is so far ahead of us that if we would just trust him every single day, that when it's all said and done, we will see Romans 8 and 28 manifest in our lives. What does it say? And now we know all things work together for our good. That's a good place for you to give God praise and a good place for me to downshift a little bit because I am 
so excited about this word today. I told you this message was entitled Night Night, and we're going to get to the reason why I named it that in a few minutes. But stick with me as I downshift, but I keep going forward. Somebody say new life. Oh, yeah, I feel that. You might say, well, pastor, oh, pastor, what does new life mean? I'm so glad you asked. New life means this. Your past cannot hold on to you. Preach Pastor Troy Wynn Senior. Say it again. New life simply means that your past cannot hold on to you. Wait a minute, Pastor. Now, I, I, I don't want to disagree with you, but 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 I, I think you might be wrong there because I, I feel like my past has been holding me back. I feel like my past has been holding on to me. I'm giving you divine information and revelation so that you can experience your own elevation. I'm giving you divine wisdom and knowledge so that you can experience an elevation in your life. Hear what I'm trying to tell you, that your past can't hold on to you. Mm -mm. Here's what's happening. It's you that's holding on to your past. Woo! Yeah, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that you have to own that. This is the day that you have to realize my past can't hold on to me. My past doesn't have the power to hold on to me because if I'm a believer, I've got a new life. If I'm a believer, I wake up every day with new mercy. So how is it that my past still haunts me? How is it that my past still pains me? How is it that my past still shames me? I'm here to tell you it's because you are holding on to your past. Today's the day, though, that you recognize you got to let it go. And here's what happens when you don't realize it's you that's holding on to your past. Here's what happens. You become a victim. That's how anybody becomes a victim. You become a victim and not a victor. OMG.com. Say it again. You become a victim and not a victor. Why? Because you're quickly able to blame or identify blame as to why you are where you are and what you did, what you did. I keep telling people all the time that you got to own your stuff. Yeah, you got to own your stuff, man. In this life, the best thing to do is to own your stuff. And I stop by to tell you, the enemy manipulates you. He manipulates you using your pain. He manipulates you using your shame. He manipulates you using your grip that you have on the past. And I stopped by to tell somebody today, why don't we just make it a million people today that you've cried enough tears. I stopped by to tell a million people today, you lived in enough pain and you've lived in enough shame long enough. I stopped by to tell somebody, you've carried the weight and the stress long enough. Can I get an amen somewhere? You know you've carried it too long. You know you've carried it so long that it's got your arch over in your back, physically, mentally, and spiritually. You know you've carried it too long because it's destroyed your dreams. It's destroyed your hope. It's caused you to not even trust and believe that the promises of God apply to you anymore. But today is a new day. Today's a new day for a new life. Today is a new day for a new way. Today is a new day to release the past and recognize that, listen, he is right. I've been holding this too long. I've been burdened too long. Here's what it is. It's time for you to put the victim to bed and wake the hero up instead. OMG.com. I don't know if you got it. I say it again. It's time for you to put the victim to bed and wake the hero up instead. I dare somebody say night, 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 what pastor? Night, night pain. Oh, somebody say night, 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 what pastor? Night, night shame. What are you telling me, pastor? You got to say night, night to the things that you've been holding on to. Night, night to the things that have been causing you nightmares. Night, night to the pain. They, oh my God, that permeates your mind. Night, night to the shame that covers your life. You got to say night, night. It's time for you to go to sleep. It's time for you to put that to bed. And it's time for you to, don't miss this, don't miss this. It's time for you to wake up the hero instead. Oh, I feel good. Now, what are you telling me, Pastor? That's right. We are waking up the hero in you. Today, you're going to wake up the hero. I dare somebody to say, I'm waking up the hero in me. What hero are we talking about, Pastor? I'm so glad you asked. God the Father, that's a hero. Jesus, the sacrifice, that's a hero. The Holy Spirit, the bridge that connects us to the kingdom. Good God Almighty, you got to wake up the hero in you and you got to say night, night to the pain in you, night, night to the shame in you. Why? Because you're not going to deal with it any longer and you're not going to allow it to be a part of your future or a part of your destiny. Give God praise if you got half of that, because man, I got it all. Woo, that's good teaching. Can I go just a little bit deeper? I need somebody to say night, 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 devil, night, night, heartache, night, night, fear. Yeah, night, night, go to sleep, go to sleep. Why? Because I'm putting you to bed and I'm waking up the hero in me instead. Here's a question. Oh, I got to close, but I want to just give you a little bit more. How do I put the victim to bed, Pastor? I, I like what you're saying. It sounds 
It sounds good. It's, it's got me excited. But, but could you give me some instructions? Could you give me some clarifications, Pastor? How do I put the victim to bed? And how do I wake up the hero instead? Quite frankly, I'm, I'm truly glad you asked me that question because I was prepared to share with you Habakkuk 2 and 2, OMG.com. If you would cha-cha slide on over to Habakkuk 2 and 2, we can meet there and have a little conversation and answer your question. Here's what Habakkuk 2 and 2 says. Then the Lord answered me and said, help me somebody. This is good to me. Write the vision. Uh huh. And while you're writing it, make it plain on tablets. And then understand this. The reason why I want you to write the vision and the reason why I want you to make it plain on tablets so that he may run who reads it. You ask me how, Pastor, how am I able? Please teach me how to put the victim to bed and wake up the hero instead. Here's how you do it. You must design and be devoted to a new vision for your life. Preach, Pastor Troy. See, if you're going to have a new life because you're getting new mercies every day, you're going to have to design and become devoted to a new vision for your life. Without a vision, the people will perish. But with the vision, come on, we have life and life more abundantly. You got to create it. You got to design it. The Bible says you got to write your vision and you got to make that thing plain. And then when you read it, God says, take off running with it. When you read it, don't run from it. Mm -mm, Run to it. When you read it, don't run from it, but run in the direction of your destiny, run in the direction of your promises, run in the direction of your dreams and your goals. God says, I'm going to give you a new life and I'm giving you new mercies, but you got to do your part. You got to create a new vision. You got to design a new vision. You got to become devoted to a new vision for your life. And here's the mistake that most people make. I've been doing this for a minute. I'm, I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. You can trust what I'm about to tell you because it's revelational. Here's the mistake that most people make. You keep looking at what you can see. Mm, let me slow down, downshift, because I don't want you to miss this because this is a gift. You keep looking at what you can see. Yeah, you keep looking at what you can see. And I need you today to hear me say two things. Stop it. It's a big mistake. Stop it. It's a big mistake. One more time. Stop it. It's a big mistake. Stop what? What's a big mistake? Stop looking at what you can see. That's the biggest mistake I see most people make in this life. See, the question is not what can you see? I know the song says, oh, say, can you see? No, the question is not what can you see? Y'all going to have to catch this with two hands because I'm about to throw you one. I hope you land in the end zone with him. The question is how far can you see? Hello, good night, night, night. Did you catch what I just said? The question is not what can you see? Because oftentimes what you see is discouraging. Oftentimes what you see will drain your hope. Oftentimes what you see will challenge your faith. No, the question is not, what can you see? Absolutely not. The question is, this is revelation. How far can you see? Okay, pastor, I, I, I think I know what you're saying. Can you give me a little bit more? Sure, don't miss this. If you can see farther than where you came from, somebody got to catch this and shout in a living room somewhere. You can go farther and be more than where you came from. OMG.com, night, night. Did I say that? Can I say it again? Please allow me to say that again. If you can see farther, preach Holy Ghost, than where you came from. Mm. Then you can go farther and you can be more than where you came from. That's why I'm teaching you. The question is not what can you see? The question is how far can you see? And I'm telling you, when you get a new vision for your life and you wake up every day with new mercies and you start walking in your new life, you will be amazed how far you can see. I can see further than where I am. I can see further than what's visible. I can see further. Why? Because I got God's supernatural power on my vision that's giving me supervision. Good God Almighty, giving me the supervision to be able to see a supervision. What supervision? The supervision of God gives me a supervision for my life. Y'all missing it. I don't know if you're catching it, but I got to say it again. The supervision, God being the supervisor of my life, the supervision of God gives me a supervision vision for my life, but not for my old life. Preach, Pastor Troy. No, it's for my new life. It's not for your old life. It's for your new life. And if you know, like I know, it takes God's supernatural vision 
to help you even imagine a new life. When you're in poverty, when things aren't working well, when you're making minimum wage, when the world seems like it's falling apart, it's not what you can see. Woo, good God Almighty, this message is blessing me. It's actually how far can you see? That's how you put the victim to bed. Preach Pastor Troy. And that's how you wake up the hero instead. I want to close with this thought because I truly do feel God's presence. Jesus has given every believer new life. I want to say that again because I need you to get that in your spirit. Jesus Christ has given every believer new life. But it's waiting on you to unframe your pain. Mm. And while you're at it, why don't you unframe your shame and claim your new life today? Tell the devil on this Sunday or whenever you happen to watch this video, night, 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 night to my pain, mm. night, night to my fears, ha. night, night to the shame that I've been walking in because of some things that I've done and places I've been and, 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 and some things that I allowed myself to do and get into. And I've been walking under the weight of that pain. But today I say to it, night, night, I'm gonna put the victim to bed and I'm about to awake the hero up and stay. I wanna pray with you today because I, I sense God's presence in this moment. And I know that whenever you watch this video all across the world, the presence of God will be readily available and on it. And you and I will always have this place in time where we were in the fellowship and in the spirit of God's voice and in the presence of God's anointing. Pray for you now that whatever shackles are on your life and, and have been on your life for far too long, Long. I'm talking about things you can't talk about. I'm talking about things you will not talk about. Things you may have never even shared with another human being. That's okay because God knows. God sees. God feels our pain and God feels our shame. But at some point, you've got to love yourself enough to let the love of God rule your heart and give you the courage to cast all your cares on the Father, knowing full well that you can do it because he cares for you. Father, I pray for every person watching this video right now. Thank you for your faithfulness, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your faithfulness, Jesus. Thank you for your faithfulness, Heavenly Father, because I know in this moment, chains are being broken. I know in this moment, <laughs> that somebody's being set free. I know in this moment mm, that somebody's being renewed, yes. Their dream had expired, their hope had expired, their faith had expired. But today, I hear you loud and clear speaking to us from heaven to earth, saying two words, new life. We claim it today, we clutch it today, we cleave to it today, and we release the past that we've been holding on to. We release it and we let it go because it cannot serve us anymore and neither can it enslave us anymore. For your word says that whom the Son is set free mm, is free indeed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Father, thank you for this word. I believe in my spirit, and I don't want to be presumptuous, but I truly do believe that somebody just got delivered. I truly do believe that someone all over the world today is being renewed and refreshed, being set free, and now you got a new lease on life. Matter of fact, you got a new life. I want to celebrate that with you. I want to celebrate that with you. And I want to do it in a way that allows you to let me know exactly who it is. The number's on the bottom of the screen. Text us at that number and let us know if you're one of those people today 
that heard this message entitled Night Night <laughs> and you decided to put the victim to bed and wake up the hero instead. Text us today if today's the day that you have had your new life renewed. We want to hear your testimonies. We want to hear the praise reports because it really does energize us to keep doing what we're doing. I hope that if you are not connected to a local church somewhere, that you will find one, one that teaches the Bible, one that teaches the word of God, one that does what I've done today, one that encourages you scripturally to be everything that God has called you to be. I know that some churches, many churches are not meeting due to the coronavirus, but you still need to reach out to a local church and connect, follow whatever they're doing on social media and become an active member digitally. If you would like for the Freedom Church to be that home for you, that, that digital church home, whether you are near or far from the city of Warner Robins, Georgia, then I also want you to text that number at the bottom of the screen and say, hey, I wanna be a part of the Freedom Church. I wanna become a digital member today. I wanna be a part of what I see God doing because I sensed something today. I felt something today. I experienced something today. And I want more of that in my life on a consistent basis. Then text us and we will send you some information and let you know the next steps. And we will also welcome you with open arms because this is the time in the season for every one of us to lay claim on our new life. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed sharing this message with you and I cannot wait to hear your response. I cannot wait to hear how it blessed you and what part blessed you most. At this time, we're going to shift and move into our time of giving. We're gonna move into our tithe and offering moment where we ask everyone who is benefiting from what God is doing in this ministry, everyone who is blessed by the teachings, by the messages, by the encouragement that comes through the Freedom Church, we ask that you would be a partner and not just a partaker. The Bible talks to us in the book of Malachi about tithing, but the Bible also talks to us about tithing in the book of Matthew. In both places, tithing is encouraged, not for the fact that one should tithe because he's afraid of being cursed. I was thinking on the way over here, why do I tithe? And I said that I tithe not because I'm afraid of being cursed. And if I can be honest with you, I don't even tithe because I'm trying to get a blessing. Nothing wrong with that, but that's not the reason why I tithe. I don't tithe because I'm afraid of being cursed and I don't tithe because I'm trying to get a blessing. The reason why I tithe is because I love God. It's just that simple. I love God so much that anything that I have that I can give back to Him, it's really not an issue for me because I recognize that He's given me the strength and the energy and the wisdom and the mindset, the talents and the gifts to do whatever it is that I do in this life. And any increase that comes my way, it's really because of Him. So when someone talks about giving God 10% of my increase, for me, that's a no-brainer. That's a no-brainer because I can easily put a 10% appraisal on how good God has been to me. As a matter of fact, if I can be honest with you, I have to increase that appraisal because 10% really doesn't really speak to how good God has been to me. But to show you how God cares about us, he only asks for 10%. The government takes through taxes. God asks through tithing. I want to say that again because I want you to recognize something. The government takes from us through taxes. But God asks through tithing. The one that gives us most does not take from us. He asks that we give back to him. Why? Because at the end of the day, giving doesn't work if your heart's not involved. Giving doesn't work if you give out of fear. Giving doesn't work if you're trying to flex and show off. Giving only works when you give because you love God. I'm asking you today, number one, to love God. Number two, I'm asking you today at the end of this program to be a tither, to give an offering to this ministry. Don't just watch it and 
at the end of it, go about your day. But pause, get your debit card, follow the protocol at the end on the screen and give. But only do it because you love God. Here's what I can tell you. If you do it because you love God, you will be blessed. I have found out you cannot beat God giving. And when your heart's in the right place, God will give you more because he enjoys watching you give. So today I'm encouraging you to be a partner, not just a partaker. We love you, we're praying for you, we believe in you, and we're excited because the day's the day that we say to our pain and our shame, night, night. God bless you. Thank you for supporting this ministry.